So before we get started, um, I just would like to let all of you know that the format today is going to be a conversation. So Heretta and I are going to be having a conversation and invite you all to witness it. If we're not looking at you, it is simply because we are engrossed in the conversation. So normally I would say to my podcast guests, it's just you and I ignore the fact that we're recording. It's difficult to record the fact that all of you are watching us, but that's what we're gonna try to do um, in order to create a safe space for, um, for this conversation. So. All right. <laughs> welcome. Thank you very much. Can you start by just telling us a little bit about yourself and your business? Yes, yeah, so I am a Dayton, Ohio native, born and raised here. Uh, just a little bit about myself. I've been knowing I wanted to be in healthcare since I was a little girl, and my family was absolutely shocked when at like the age of six or seven, you know, I'm like, hey, I wanna be a nurse. And like, nurse? Nobody in our family was in the medical field, but I just felt at a very young age that medicine was the way to go. So um, just to start off, I volunteered as a candy striper <laughs> at Good Samaritan Hospital just to make sure I really wanted to do that when it was time for me to go to college. So started off as candy striper and then I became a um, nursing assistant and while nursing assistant, I became an LPN, licensed practical nurse, and then I became a registered nurse. So I always had a passion for helping others. And um, so I just continued on. For 20 years, I was in the nursing field until I discovered the benefits of holistic health. And I decided to exit the nursing field and uh, do this full time with my business, Peace Within 111. And, uh, but for 10 years, I absolutely adored being a hospice nurse because I was able to be at the bedside with a lot of family and uh, the patient and assist them with um, the death process. And that's actually where I discovered my intuitive gift, <laughs> believe it or not. So you want me to go a little bit more into that? I would love to okay. hear about that. <laughs> So yeah, so I was a nurse at the bedside. I worked night shifts, so 7 p.m. to 7 a.m. being with someone for 12 hours. Absolutely loved it because it gave me the ability to really hone in on what that patient was experiencing. And um, my intuitive gift really showed up when I was around about 2021. 20, I could sense when someone was about to leave this earthly plane. Uh, don't understand why my family used to call me the Grim Reaper, <laughs> but um, I could tell within five or 10 minutes that someone was gonna pass away. Of course, we had the telltale physical signs, but in my spirit, I could tell that they were about to exit. And it gave a lot of family members comfort because I could tell them, hey, you can go to sleep. If something was to change, I will wake you up. And a lot of times they will be able to go to bed. And if anything was to occur, I woke them up and tell them that they need to come and say their last words uh, with the family member because I truly believe that uh, hearing is the last thing to go when uh, someone is in that process. So this is fascinating to me. So how how did you know? Is it just a, a knowing? Like what does that feel like for you? Yeah, it's really hard to explain. I just know things. <laughs> it's really, um, I feel like it's a chat. I don't like to call it channeling, but it, it's, it's just an intuitive knowing. It just comes right on in and I just know. And I truly use it in my practice now with uh, the healing work that I do. I'm able to pick up on stuff very easily. Even we were having a conversation, I was able to pick up on stuff. And I was like, oh, we're, we're talking already. Maybe I shouldn't have mentioned that. <laughs> yeah, so for all of you, we were just visiting a little bit before the session and um, Heretta asked me, so are you a writer? And I said, no, nah, well, I mean. No, you say kinda. Kinda. Yeah. <laughs> and she said, well, I think you will be within right. the next three years. And I said, actually, I've been working on a book. I haven't told anybody about it. And mm -hmm. she said, see? <laughs> I just know. <laughs> yeah, a lot of people are like, how do you know? I'm like, I just know. I don't claim to be a psychic or anything. It's really a truly intuitive gift, um, like a sixth sense. So, yeah. So I'm, I'm curious. So when we talk about healing, um, and on the podcast, we talk about healing a lot. I often ask the question, what does healing mean to you? Mm -hmm. But I'm curious, specifically having experience in traditional medicine mm -hmm. as well as in non-traditional and holistic healing modalities, I'm curious, 
what healing means to you. So healing to me is a full spectrum of ourselves. So one knows that healing is to restore one's body, you know, whatever it may be. But I feel like the restoration can be on an emotional level, a mental level, a physical level, spiritual level, as well as an energetic level. Um, I feel healing is work. <laughs> we live in a society that everybody think everything is instantaneous and a lot of people, oh my God, I just want to get there. And I'm like, this? This has taken decades <laughs> to finally be at a place of having that inner peace, which is why my business is called Peace Within. But um, yeah, so I feel healing is a lot of hard work. Healing is has to be intentional. Healing is beautiful. Healing is um, broad. You know, it, it, it's a it's a lot that goes into it. Then a lot of times I feel like we just focus on the physical body, but a lot of a lot of times um, there's emotional ailments that occur that turns into physical disease. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> like someone might say, like, I, I'm always having this headache. Well, I don't know, I can't, can't get rid of this headache. And usually it's stress. Stress is the number one killer. Honestly, it truly, truly is. And a lot of times we don't realize this till it's very, the very, very end and our body just knocks us down. And you're like, oh, I don't know. It came out of nowhere. No, it didn't. You just wasn't paying attention. You weren't tuning in with yourself. And I feel like that is essential with healing. Yeah, I often say that, that spirit will uh, show us mm -hmm. maybe a little tap on the shoulder. And if we're like, yeah, no, no, no I not. got this. No, right. then it's more like a, a shove. And you're like, what the heck was that? You know, and if you don't listen, then it's like a push. And then you're mm -hmm. like, fall on the ground and get up and you're like, hey, wait a second. Yeah. You keep going. You keep going. The next step is a two by four. Right. <laughs> you're <just> like, <laughs> so you're going to listen or else your body's going to make you listen. Exactly. Exactly. And have, and have that rest. And I honestly feel like that pandemic that we had was a time for us to really go within. Did we all utilize it as well as we should have? Maybe, maybe not. But we had the time to really rediscover ourselves. And I had a, had a lot of clients coming in after that, <laughs> after the pandemic, so yeah. So let's talk about that. So can you talk a little bit about what do you do for clients? What does um, your service as a, as a healer look like? So typically, um, okay, so just when somebody comes in, yeah. I mean, or, in general, like what does intuitive healing, what look, does that look like? Okay. So a lot of people typically come to me when they don't have anything else. They've tried everything and don't know, or they feel, oh, I, I just feel out of balance. I don't know what's going on. Or I wanted to try something new. Or I'm having depression. I'm having anxiety. I just recently started working on kids, and that's been great. Been working on kids who have uh, ADHD, um, fear, uh, confidence issues. So it's a variety of things that people come see me for, but typically they come in, everybody's nervous because they don't know what to expect. You know, they read the reviews. I have tons of good reviews on Google if anybody want to check them out. <laughs> but a lot of people have read the reviews and say, I heard so many good things about you, but this is what's going on. And a lot of times people tell me that things they never told anybody else because they need to heal. You know, you have to get a lot of stuff off your chest to heal. So when they first come in, I'll do a quick assessment to see which chakras. Chakras, if you are not familiar, is our energetic system. Uh, we have seven major ones that start at the top of our head to the base of our spine. They're all related to different organs in our bodies as well as different themes in our life. And I assess... Um, with a, a tool, a pendulum, to see what's open and which closed, because you want them to be open and circulate the energy just like our blood system, our energy flows just as much, you know? So I'll assess to see which chakras are open and which ones are closed. And then from there, I use vibrational uh, sounds. So I use tuning forks, and they all have different frequencies. And just by hearing those frequencies, it assists with revitalizing the cells within the body. And then I also use body tuners, so you feel a vibration on your uh, body. And I also use hands-on healing because I have healing hands. So it's quite an experience. A lot of people compare it to a massage, but it's a non-invasive massage because I'm not manipulating your muscles. I'm manipulating your energy. Okay. Yeah. All right. <laughs> I hear some snaps in the room. So let, let's talk about how do you rejuvenate yourself. So as a business owner and as a healer, mm -hmm. it's important for you to also take care of yourself. So yes. what does your self-care look like? 
um, I feel like we're in a season of self-care this and self-care that. You know, a lot of people talk about, you know, go get pampered. It's so much more than that to me. Uh, for me personally, I have to uh, depend on meditation, honestly. Um, meditate in every day, even if it's just for three minutes. Like he, like we did with Reggie, the, uh, Reginald, the breath work. Those three breaths just to start your day off. Um, I'm big on affirmations. Um, I have tons of those on my bathroom mirror, so while I'm brushing my teeth, I can speak life into myself. Um, I love the sunshine. I'm sad that summer is exiting. <laughs> but the sunshine definitely revitalizes me as well as being out, being out in nature. So those are the things that I do for my personal self-care. And honestly, just tuning in with myself and seeing what I need. Definitely eating well, exercise, all, you know, all the simple things that really matter, they add up. So have you, um, have you experienced being a business owner or maybe even being a nurse where there is a, a struggle between the balance of self-care and, and service in others? Yes. Yes, 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 yes. Uh, yeah, unfortunately, <laughs> I have experienced that uh, because what I do, uh, I'm clear to let people know that they're not taking my energy away when I'm working on them. Because a lot of people feel like they're so dense and so heavy. Oh my God, I don't want to put all this on you. And it's, it's not that at all. You know, I'm just a facilitator of positive energy. So I'm pouring into you, but it's not really taken from me. It's taken from source. That's a whole different story. But, <laughs> but for the most part, um, I, I recall last summer that um, I usually take the week of my birthday off. Just be just a reset, you know, like going into a new year or transition. And for some reason, last year, um, a week wasn't enough. And I felt bad <laughs> because there, there came a time where uh, people were coming in from out of town and had heard about me and wanted an appointment. And I had to say, no, I'm sorry, I'm, I'm closed for this week. But that one week turned into two weeks. And then Spear had told me, like, oh, I don't think you're quite restored yet. And I'm like, but I have these people scheduled. What am I going to do? And I found out the hard way. I, I found myself on the way to work, and I started crying. And I never felt like my job, my what I currently do is work. And um, I'm like, why am I emotional? I was going to see one of my one of my favorite clients. You know, I've worked with her several times, and I just couldn't understand why I wasn't feeling well. And uh, over time, um, after that session, Spear really hollered at me, like you were talking about, sit down, mm -hmm. you know. So um, I had to choose to care for myself and cancel a whole week of appointments. It was a first, but it was so necessary because when I came back, I felt so much better. So I really feel like even though we are, even though I am an entrepreneur and I'm serving others, um, I'm nothing if my tank is empty. Mm. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> I hear that. Yeah. Um, so, uh, I lost what I was going to ask related to that. Hold on. Okay. It'll come back. Um, for, well, let's, let's look at the, the questions. Oh, I know what I was going to ask. Mm -hmm. So, for, for me, often in the, in the work of a story coach or even with a podcast, um, having healing conversations and, and having the safe space often mm. triggers deeper healing for me. Mm. So in being a space for healing for others, it reminds me, or, you know, is that tap on the shoulder, for me to do more of my own work, to go deeper into my own healing. Do you find that to be the same for you? Does Absolutely. this work? Yes. Absolutely. Um, I've, and I honestly feel that Excuse me. A lot of times, um, I'm able to empathize with someone because I've been through those things. Like, yeah, you see this version of me, but uh, I have been through the trauma that you may have experienced. So that's why I'm able to console at the time and, and really go. And it does trigger, but I've he actively healing <laughs> those things. I never say healed. Because yes. I feel like healing is a constant journey and a process. So the, the fact that they are coming and sharing very deep uh, details about their lives, it does make me go inside and think about my journey compared to theirs. But um, I, I am able to offer advice and what allowed me to get through those things. 
Can you share a little bit with us about that, about your own personal healing journey and maybe how it has affected what you're doing today? Yeah, um, so my healing journey started when um, my father passed away when I was 21. And it was unexpected. It rocked my world. I'm a daddy's girl. I'm also a mama's baby. But <laughs> but uh, it absolutely rocked my world. And at the time, my, I was mourning. I felt like a part of me had left. And I, I just couldn't put my my head around it, you know. And it was it came years of me just, you know, grieving and going through that process. And I was like, well, you know, I've been in this hospice work for, I, I know all about the death and dying process. Why is it taking me so long to get over this? And spirit just like really corrected me and said, we really have to do some heart healing. So I started with my heart chakra. And um, I was raised in a, a Christian home. And at the time, you know, we, we heard things of, oh, uh, don't, don't, you know, look into the metaphysical and stuff like that. But the spirit was telling me I needed a rose quartz crystal. So <laughs> I started doing like my own little research and I was like, well, crystals are of the earth and you know, we wear diamonds and diamonds are of the earth. And I was just like, let me go ahead and, and grab, listen to my intuition and grab this crystal. So I uh, grabbed the rose quartz crystal and placed it up under my pillow. So while I was sleeping, it did all the healing work. And before I knew it, I seriously was being able to go through the motions because it was coming that anytime around my father's uh, death, the date, the month, not even the date, the month, I would just be mourning like, oh, here it comes. And I had to make a decision. I didn't want to have that feeling for the rest of my life. I was like, I, I just can't do this for 50, 60 plus more years of every time this month comes around that I, I'm just dreary. And now I don't even remember the date because I, I really detached myself from that. So my healing journey really honestly started with the passing of him. And um, it's just evolved since then. And I'm happy about it because <laughs> it has definitely helped me grow. Yeah, uh, shadow work, the work of, yeah. of facing our fears and facing the, the hurt and healing from that can often be a, I mean, it can be, sometimes it can be years, right? Mm -hmm. It can be every time it comes back, working through that. Um, so can you talk a little bit about that? What does um, shadow work look like either for you personally or as a healer when other people are, are working through that? Well, for to me, shadow work, uh, it's, it's a lingo in the spiritual world. <laughs> but what I, I like to start off with, try to go back to your earliest memory and really go year by year. If you started at five, think about what happened at five, what happened at six, and, and so on and so on. And really don't do it all in one day. Take time to do it and really process, like, what did I go through during this time? How did it make me feel? How does it show up in my life now? Like, we are really shaped from things that happened in our childhood. Um, so I feel it's very important to do that shadow work and honestly get to know yourself and not just uh, subscribe to what somebody else told you, who you're supposed to be and how you're supposed to act and, and everything like that. So my shadow work was going year through year what was going on, actually addressing those issues, if it was any type of form of abuse, actually uh, discussing that journaling, like we talked about earlier, actually journaling. Actually, I like to have a fake um, A double dollar sign conversations. <laughs> I call them fake conversations where I just express myself, even though one is there, but at least getting it off my chest, because a lot of people don't realize we replay the scenario in our head and it, it messes up your mental health because you're recurring the story. And it's just like, if you just get it off of yourself, it can relieve so much stuff, so much dense and heavy energy. So a lot of times when my clients are there and they're just expressing everything that has occurred in their life, by the time they leave me, they're like, oh my God, I feel like I'm walking on a cloud. And I'm like, yeah, all of that was heavy. And you just didn't know you were carrying it around but we got the vibrations higher. I love what I do. Can you tell? I can. I can tell. That's incredible. I Yeah, I can absolutely relate to that feeling of like, whether it's journaling or talking to an empty chair mm -hmm. or with a, with a healer, taking the time to process through. I think that's a word often that we don't describe. Like, what does process through mean? It really means going back mm -hmm. and and sitting in that, whatever it is, 
and allowing it to flow through you. Yeah. And that can be journaling, that can be talking, that can be, you know, crying and, and punching a pillow and yes. yelling at someone that's no longer here, yeah. right? People really think crying is a bad thing. Oh, soon they get on my table, they're like, am I supposed to cry? And I'm like, it's up to you. If it comes, it comes. Let it out. Like, it's not a bad thing. Crying is cleansing. It's necessary. We need to cry from time to time. It's not a, um, a masculine thing nor a feminine thing. It's just what we need to do. It's part of our emotional body, you know? Um, so I'm all about crying. <laughs> I mean, there's a reason we called it tears. Tears, right. Tears, tears and and transpiration. Yeah. It, I mean, <laughs> the tears are a critical part. It, you know, as humans, um, the makeup of our tears actually changes with the type of tears that are coming out. So. Um, happy tears look chemically under a microscope different oh. than sad tears because what we're doing is we're actually releasing emotion yeah. in that water that's coming from our eyes. It's incredible. That is. It's incredible. Um, so can we talk a little bit, so before when we were sitting visiting, we mm -hmm. talked a little bit about how for us entrepreneurship has, has been a passion Right. It's mm -hmm. a it's not necessarily about the money. I mean, we all want to make money. Of right? course. Of course. <laughs> but can we t can you talk a little bit about that? Like the yeah. transfer from you from nursing, nursing into to uh, peace within yeah. and um, and uh, about being a passion printer. What talk a yeah. little bit about that. So uh, my journey to get, do, can I explain how I got into the holistic yes, arts? Yes, please okay. do. Okay, yeah. <laughs> so like I said, I, I, I had worked for a, um, for a hospice company and they had an employee health fair. And at the time I had just got into yoga and I was still doing, going through the grieving process of losing my father. And I felt like that yoga just gave me this euphoric feeling, like it was like a natural high. And I'm like, what is this? You know, I need to know more about it. So anyway, at the employee health fair, a lady was there. She had a yoga studio. And I was talking to her about how, you know, how much I enjoy it, how, you know, I feel like it's making me lean, this, another. And she's like, well, I also do Reiki. And I'm like, hmm, what's that? And she's like, oh, you know, it's the universal energy that flows through every living thing. And I'm like, okay, you know, just giving her the side eye. Okay. <laughs> like a lot of people give me, but uh, <laughs> I gave her the side eye. And she was like, well, you know, I'm giving out a free session. So put your name in. You never know, you might win. I'm like, I don't never win anything, but okay. So I signed up, put my name in. And at the time, I was an on-call nurse, so I was out from 5 p.m. to like 2 o'clock in the morning, driving around to people's homes or hospital, wherever they needed me at the night, during the night, and I was experiencing insomnia. So I end up winning. When I say it came right on time, it came right on time. I went and had the session, no longer had insomnia, and I was like, what, what, what is this, you know? And at the time, my friend had got diagnosed with uh, multiple sclerosis, and she was experiencing a lot of pain. So I treated her to a session. I paid for her session. And afterwards, I was like, how do you feel, friend? And she like, I, I actually feel better. And I'm like, oh, well, if anything, I'm going to learn this for you to help with your health, you know? So uh, from there, I did learn about um, Reiki, and I ended up finding a holistic school and finished doing all different kind of modalities from there. I forgot what the original question was, but, <laughs> but that is really how I got into the healing arts is because of um, a health fair and gave it a try, and it really worked for me. And before I knew it, my heart was healing, and I was just like, I, I need to do this. It, it, it really, truly changed my life, which allowed me to go into a business business for myself. So I started my business back in uh, 2014, but I didn't, I was still working as a nurse. I didn't fully take the jump because you know it's a huge jump when it comes to being an entrepreneur. Like you, you have, a, have to have a whole lot of faith because you're depending on others to supply for you, but you're giving a service, you know? Um, so I didn't take the final leap until 2019 because it, it just became a clash. Uh, you know, I'll, I'll be given medication, somebody saying I'm in pain, and I'm like, oh, okay, here's a Vicodin, but inside, internally, I'm like, I can lay hands on you, and it can help relieve some of the pain, so it just became a place where it was clashing, and I, I remember breaking down on my mom, and was just crying, I was like, I can't do this anymore, 
I can't, in my heart, I knew it was so much more for me to do than just be a pill pusher. And um, yeah, I'm sorry for all the nurses in the in the building. But <laughs> at the time, that's, that's what I felt. I didn't feel as um, purposeful with that work. When I was in hospice, I loved it. And it felt part, but after 10 years, it wore on me mentally and, and spiritually and energetically. So um, this was my next calling and I, I listened and uh, yeah, it was a time where I, I offered my healing services for $44 for just a session and I couldn't believe it. I was like, Spirit, you want me to do what? For a whole year, $44 for this session, even though I knew it was worth more than that, mm -hmm. but I, I honored that. And I feel like now I'm being rewarded for being able to offer that type of service to people for that affordable of a price to teach them something new about healing, that you don't always have to go to the doctor when something's going on. The work that I do is somewhat preventative from you having to go to the doctor. And so, yeah. That's incredible. Yeah. <laughs> you know, it's a, it's, it sounds like a calling. It's definitely a calling. Believe me, it's, it's, it's a calling that is on my life. Um, and it, just going back to um, self-care, there's a, an affirmation that's on my mirror that I look at. And I'm, I'm, I was just visualizing, so that's why I blanked out for a second. But it says, uh, care for self. No, uh, care for, serve others. Serve my purpose while caring for self. So I made sure I write that back in like 2018 before I officially left <laughs> nursing. <laughs> So yeah, it's definitely a part. It's purposeful work. I believe that um, there's all different kind of healers, but what I do is blend several modalities into one. And the session that um, I offer to people was divinely inspired. I don't do anything that you know I wouldn't do myself. So I'm I'm not full of it. I've experienced these things, and that's why I do it. And I, I'm so hard heartedly believe in it. And I feel like it was definitely a calling on my life, just the way how everything was organized and came together. Because there's no way that the lady, oh, and that's the thing, the Reiki, come to find out when I was in LPN school, somebody gave me Reiki and I didn't even realize it. So it's been in my life, it kept showing up in my life. So that's why I was like, oh my goodness, this is what I'm supposed to be doing. <laughs> that's incredible. Yeah. My, my sister had surgery recently and the hospital gave her like a list of things to go home and ways she can manage pain and Reiki was on the list from Shut the up. hospital. It's I coming. Know. Exactly. It's absolutely coming. The Cleveland Clinic, they do a lot of, they call it um, healing hands because people get turned off by the term of Reiki. It is a Japanese practice, but to make people more comfortable, they call it helping hands or healing hands. But that's incredible. Isn't that incredible? Because I feel like it's necessary to blend the both. I'm not saying one is better than the other. We do need medication. That That's what it's here for, you know? But we can also add the alternative, because personally, I go to the chiropractor every four weeks not just because my back hurts, I just go for maintenance. He's like, what's going on? Nothing, I'm just here for maintenance. And he's like, okay. <laughs> like I, I, I enjoy doing things to prevent anything from going wrong. I think, just checking the time, I think that idea of maintenance is really important and critical, especially as an entrepreneur, right? And it's mm -hmm. not just maintenance of your back, but maintenance of of oh. your your mind, m body, spirit, all of those things. And I want to give some time to open up questions, but can you real quickly give us some tips and tools for maintenance of yourself, of yourself, okay. and especially as an entrepreneur? As an entrepreneur, I feel it is very special to stay grounded and centered in who you are and what's the purpose of your the work that you are doing. Um, as an entrepreneur, it's important to go with the flow and, and not try to control everything because we get a lot of ups and downs with the, the life of an entrepreneur, but also having that self-worth, like applaud yourself when you are doing something and showing up for yourself and making a difference in someone's life. Even if you are offering, serving food, you're filling somebody's belly. I remember being on a trip somewhere and I saw a man on the corner uh, selling fruit and I, I just knew that was his purpose. Even though it might look minute for someone, I knew that was his purpose to provide nutritional food and fruits and vegetables to people. So never discount what you're doing. Also be sure to have a, a heart that is full of forgiveness um, and compassion for others. I, I just, we're in a society that 
Um, I feel that we, we are getting desensitized with a lot of stuff, so make sure that your heart is in tune. Um, also, speak your truth. People can definitely be inspired by your story, so check in mentally about, you know, being authentic with your brand and who you are. Um, trust that gut instinct. I'm really big on your intuition. Like, if something is telling you to you go home the same way all the time and something telling you to go left instead of right, just do it. Like, <laughs> why not? Just listen to yourself. And also, um, make sure that you take the time to go within every day because you might get the clarity and insight that is necessary. That's beautiful. Yeah. So before we open to questions from, from all of you, I'd like to take a piece of uh, Retta's advice right now. And let's celebrate yourselves. Let's take a moment and celebrate you as an entrepreneur, as someone who got up early and showed up here today, who's doing the things and who's serving our community. So can we just take a moment and all of you give yourselves a round of applause? We're going to clap for you too. All right. Does anyone have questions? I truly believe that, I'm not a parent, let me give that disclaimer, but <laughs> I believe it's important for children to get outside more in nature. Nature is grounding. A lot of times when clients come into my office, I don't have any shoes on, just so I can stay centered. I feel like a lot of our, the children these days are overwhelmed with constant stimuli, and at least with being outside in nature, you can at least ground yourself a little bit more. Um, one of my favorite tips to give people when it comes to grounding children as well, because they are imaginative, is imagine roots coming from your feet and penetrating the earth. And imagine like anything that's just overwhelming and wearing you down that is going deep into the earth and relieving you. And just like how we did those breaths earlier, take those deep breaths and actually connect with the earth. And visualizing the color red, that assists with getting more grounded as well. Does that answer your question? Okay, you're welcome. But definitely, and then um, also having children speak up more and, and talk about what's going on. I feel like a lot of times you go out in public and everybody's just looking down. Technology, we need to get back to human interaction. Anybody else? Yes. I start my day with hot lemon water just to get my stomach together, <laughs> as, so, as well as drinking water. And then I take a moment just to express gratitude. So I have a gratitude journal that I write down three things a day, what I am grateful for. Gratitude, I feel, gets you a long way in life. Um, I'm also big on affirmations and speaking things into my life and how I want my day to go. And um, that's just about the beginning of my day. I have a mantra playlist. Mm -hmm. So it's all songs that are positive and uplifting. Yes. And so every morning when I'm in the shower, I listen to this playlist. Mm -hmm. And because I'm starting my day with words that then throughout the day, those words are come up for me. Yeah. Yeah, I'm, bi I'm big on a, a feel-good jam list because our moves just switch. We're human. Yes. Things happen. And I don't think a lot of people realize we're way, our, mm, as a collective, consciousness is increasing. And a, a lot of times people are way more empathic than they believe. Like you are absorbing other people's energy on a routine basis. So it's important for you to tune in with self and like, is this my anxiety? Is this? my heaviness that I'm experiencing. And if it's not, go ahead and place the button on that feel good jam list and get you a good song to keep you motivated and, and moving on. Yeah. Yes.
Yes, I absolutely feel that it's important. You can't do everything alone. Having like-minded people is very uh, important. So yes, I do. Uh, actually, on Saturday, I'm doing a group healing session with a total of five ladies. Um, I also do host retreats. So I'm doing a retreat next weekend. Uh, for the fall equinox, and that's um, five or s four to five ladies that come together where we do healing work together. So yes, I do think it's important, especially if you are um, in a comfortable setting amongst friends or having someone facilitate that journey who is experienced. It's really hard to um, come together with people who are on the same level. I think it's important for someone who has been through some things to, to lead that healing journey. But I'm big on personal healing by yourself, but I feel like it can be a little bit more impactful when it's in, with a group sometimes. So I used to do, I used to host full moon gatherings before uh, the pandemic happened. And that was great for like-minded people to come together and just do some breath work and actually release some things um, in the act of being in a group. That's incredible. Yeah. Yes. Ultimate reset session. Oh, my God. Oh, my You're welcome. <laughs> <laughs> that was just like a month ago. Oh my goodness. You are so welcome. Thank you for sharing that. Oh, I love. Did you write me a review on Google? <laughs> <laughs> you did. Yes, you did. I remember. Thank you so much. <laughs> Why don't you let everybody know how they can book a session with you? Yes, yes. So if anyone is interested, you can uh, get a session or just read more about the things that I do on my website, which is Peace Within 111, the numbers 111.com. Uh, and um, if you're interested, you can come down and talk to me as well. And I do have like little flyers or stuff that you can have. But you can find me on Facebook, Peace Within 111. Uh, uh, what else? Instagram, as well as my website. And Google, like I said, has over 125 five-star reviews. So if you want to read about people's experience with me, you can see it there as well. I think we have time for one more question. Yes, ma'am. Good morning. Yeah. About you, so you said something about the energy. You said, you said something about the energy over here. 
your liver. liver. Uh-huh. I told you. Yeah, yeah, I could, I could sense it. So that's part of my gift is being able to touch your body and figure out where you might have some blocked energy. And yeah, don't ask me how I know. <laughs> but yeah, that's, that's part of, that's how I know it's purposeful and that's how I know that this is what I'm supposed to do because I can just pick up on stuff. So yeah, Ms. Watez, I did feel her uh, liver and I was like, something's going on here. And she was like, really? I don't know. And sometimes people come to me and they're bloated and by the time they leave, the it's gone. So just by hearing the frequency as well as feeling it, it assists with revitalizing the body totally. Yeah, I love Incredible. It. Yeah. Well, we are out of time, mm -hmm. so let's give Heretta a huge round of applause. Thank you. And we'll both hang around for a couple of minutes, so if you have any questions, come on down. Yes. Thank you all.